What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out how we can create kind of a, a deformed surface with an architectural feature on the outside of it using an add-on for Blender called Flowify. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I've talked about Flowify on the channel, but I just really like it because it's based on a tool that I've used a bunch in SketchUp. And basically what it is, is it's a tool that allows you to set up kind of a target surface, so like a base surface and then a target surface. You can bend objects along surfaces um, in a way that uh, you really get a lot of control over the result that's created. So um, if you do wanna check it out, I'll link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I do receive a commission. Um, but this is definitely an add-on that I really like. So let's jump over into SketchUp and take a look at the way this might work. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create the surface that I'm gonna bend an object along. So to do that, we're just going to do a Shift A and we're gonna add a plane and I'm gonna go into front on mode and I'm going to align that with my view so it's kind of straight up. And we'll go ahead and we'll say the size is going to be 50 feet. And then I'm just gonna do an S, Z and scale it down by maybe like uh, 0.33 or something like that. And so really what I wanna do is I just wanna create like a long surface that might be like an architectural surface um, that we might bend something along. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I go into my object and apply my rotation and scale. And then I just wanna like sculpt this a little bit. Um, and we're just gonna do this in a very simple way. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna do some subdivisions in here. So I'm just going to subdivide this and then probably subdivide it one or two more times just so that I have that supporting geometry in here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the one key on my keyboard and note that I'm in edit mode right now. And I'm just going to select a couple of these vertices and I'm going to toggle proportional editing on. And then I'm going to do a G and a Y in order to have these kind of move out. And one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to hold that Alt key and drag this up like this. And notice how all of those are being affected um, by this radius in here. And this might be more of an X direction type thing rather than a Y direction thing. But we're just kind of looking for a shape that does this kind of like general in and out kind of organic um, shape inside of it. And so now what I want to do is I want to model an architectural feature like a screen or like a series of slats that's going to go on front of this. And so there's actually a really cool tool in the add-on Flowify, which you do need to make sure you've installed um, so that you can do this. But you can right click and under Flowify, notice how there's an option to create a source grid from a target surface. And so if you do this, what this is gonna do is this is going to create a custom plane in here with that geometric detail that you have from your object that's going to be the size of the object that you're bending on top of. Well, the cool thing about that is now I can move this and I can use it as a surface that I can model my uh, actual geometric objects on top of. So I'm just gonna do an R, Y. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees right here. It might actually be negative 90 degrees, we'll see, but I'm just gonna move it down so that it's kind of aligned with this surface. One thing that I like to do is toggle my vertex snapping on when I do that so that I can actually align this with this object over here. Probably not that big of a deal, but I like having things aligned in my models. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna map model out the slat structure that's gonna go on top of this. The nice thing about this is this object right here is the correct size for something that needs to be built on this surface. So we can use it as kind of a guide in here. So in this situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shift right click and I'm going to do a shift A. I'm going to add a, we can call it a cube. That's probably fine. And I'm just going to bring that size down. So I'm assuming this is gonna be maybe like six inches by six inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a G B in order to set a base point and I'm gonna align it with this surface. Well, then I can tab in here in edit mode and I can select the surface and I can just do a G, Z, probably wanna to toggle that proportional editing off, but I'm gonna do a G, Z and I'm gonna move this up so that it's aligned with this surface right here. And so say we wanted these to be longer, you could extrude this out right here, you could make it narrower. You can really do whatever you want just by moving these faces in here. And all I'm trying to do 
within this object is I'm just trying to create a series of slats that can go on this surface. Now, um, what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm going to add an array modifier right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna set a fixed length. So in this case, we're gonna set that length right here and we wanna make sure that we are not moving this in the X direction, we want this to be in the Y direction right here. And in this case, probably the negative Y direction, that's going to be fine. Um, but what I can do is I can set my overall length, right? Which is gonna be whatever the length of the object is and I'm not actually gonna get in here and do any like hardcore measuring, I'm just going to get this close right here, but then I can adjust the offset in here in order to set the number of slats that are created on this surface. And the cool thing about this is we can set this up so this is live in here, just like this. But now what I wanna do is I wanna take this object and we can definitely come in here and add some more detail, but for right now, let's just leave it as is. What I wanna do is I wanna take that object and I wanna use Flowify to bend it along this surface. And so to do that, what I can do is I can right click on the object and I can activate Flowify. And so notice how when I activate Flowify, what it's gonna look for is it's going to look for your base surface. So you need to find a point on that corner, the base surface, and then you can find the corresponding point on this other surface right here. Now, one thing you're going to note when you do this is this isn't actually following along with the surface very well. And the reason why is because we don't have enough supporting geometry in this object, right? So what this is trying to do, and I'll tab into edit mode so you can see it better, is it's trying to bend it along this surface um, and conform it to this geometry, but we don't actually have any vertices and points on our objects in order to do that. So what we can do is we can just tab in here and I can just do a control R and scroll my mouse up and I can add some loop cuts like this. Notice how when I add loop cuts, what that does is this gives this geometry that it can then bend along the surface so things start matching up a little bit better. And you might come in here and just add like one loop in this direction like this, you could add a loop in the other direction, kind of in the middle right there, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference. But notice how now this object is being bent along this surface. And one thing you can do in order to make that better is you can actually, um, within this object, you can add a simple subdivision modifier. So instead of me just coming in here and like subdividing this and subdividing this, we can add a subdivision surface modifier right here. Now notice if you leave this as the Catmull Clark, what it's gonna do is it's going to subdivide this in a way that it bends this, which is not what we want. What we want is the simple subdivision that's just going to add additional geometry without actually changing our shape. And notice how the more geometry I had add in here, at some point you stop seeing a distance anymore, but you can use this in order to add that additional geometric detail. And so just so that we can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna apply a wood texture from um, Materialix Asset Browser, or actually I might use a real wood textures texture. Um, but I'm gonna drag this in. I'm just going to apply a material to this object. And so when I apply the material to this object, notice how it's being applied over here to these as well. And so what we've done is we've been able to come in here and we've been able to create this surface that kind of follows along with this surface right here. And there's two cool things I want you to see. The first is because we've built this using modifiers, notice how we can adjust the number of objects that are placed along that surface. Just by using or by adjusting the Y distance, right? So I can bring them closer or I can bring them further away. So that's one cool thing. The other cool thing is because of the way Flowify works, what it's doing is it's bending it along this target object, right? Well, if I tab into edit mode and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select a vertex and I'm gonna turn proportional editing on and I just wanna select this one vertex, not the others. But notice how if I come in here and I move this around, because of the nature of the way that Flowify is doing this, the bend is actually adjusting as well. So this is actually coming in here and this is like live bending this object in here along this surface. So for architectural features like this, this is actually a really cool 
tool, which is why I'm a big fan of it. Um, as opposed to like a conform object, which is also a great tool, but that one's a little bit more like kind of click and drag your object and it kind of stretches to follow along the surface. This allows me, this does a really good job of allowing me to come in here and actually model along this target surface and make things match up the way that I would like for them to match up. And so one other thing you might want to do is you might want to add some horizontal supports in here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this surface just so you can kind of see what we're creating here. Um, but you might want to add some horizontal supports in here. Well, the way that you might do that, because right now I don't think Flowify has the ability to bend a collection along a surface. So you would probably have have to flow a separate object. Um, but what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to model out that support really quick. So I'm just going to do a shift A. I'm going to add a cylinder and align it with my view. And I'm going to bring that radius like way, way down. I don't want this to be super big. So maybe something like this. And we'll just kind of align it with the middle of our object right here. I'm just gonna move this over so that it aligns with the end. With this object, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add an extra object on the end right there. But what I've done is I've created this kind of like long cylindrical shape. And again, I'm gonna do that same thing where I just use the array modifier. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna do it in a Z direction. So in a vertical direction. And so we'll just do this in the Y direction right here, but I'm going to add these as supports on the object. And so what I want to do is I want to take these objects, and it's always a good idea before you run Flowify, by the way, to save your model. So I'm going to do a file save, but then we're going to take this, and because this is already set up with this target surface, we can just right click on it, run a Flowify, and then just pick our corner point again. And I want to make sure that I can see my target surface. I'm just going to click here, we're going to click here like this. Remember, we need to add that supporting geometry in order for this to work. So we're just going to tab in here. And in this case, I'm going to do a control R. And I'm just going to scroll my mouse up and add a bunch of loop cuts in here. So something like this. Then once I do that, notice how this op these objects follow along with this surface right here. And so what we've done is we've created two separate Flowifies in here, right? Now if I hide this target surface, you can see how this object is in here just like this. And so the cool thing about this is because these are all targeted to the same surface, if I come back in here, edit this plane like this, and let's just say we toggled our proportion, proportional editing back on, and you'll probably be able to see it better from the other side. Because of the way we've set this up, both your supports and your surface are going to adjust at the same time. So this gives you the ability to do some really cool things with mapping complex objects onto complex surfaces inside of Blender. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, if you like what you can do with Flowify, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I just, I really like being able to create these architectural style forms in a way that's adjustable later on. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.